uh, and then that way anybody that couldn't that way anybody that couldn't attend can also uh, pop on to the website and uh, see the video from uh, from our meeting today. So uh, I wanted to uh, real quickly just say thanks to everybody for uh, joining uh, me this evening. Uh, I know looking at several of the names here, I know a lot of you I've seen your your names pop up in Gary's meetings um, over the last couple of months. And so, uh, you know, I know most of you are probably pretty well informed on uh, the direction that we're headed, but I wanted to uh, give everybody uh, just some updates that were specific to the high school uh, so that uh, if you if there's any information that you uh, uh, that you needed or was unsure of that, you know, you'd have an opportunity to ask uh, some questions. But I did have some specific things uh, that I wanted to share uh, with everybody uh, before I leave it open for questions. I think we'll do what we've done uh, in the past. Uh, we'll just you can ask your questions in the chat box, um, and then at the end, I'll just go through the chat box and uh, answer them to the best of my ability. Um, so. Uh, as, as most of you know, I think uh, next week is the, uh, the week that we're going to check out Chromebooks to the high school students. Um, we're going to uh, hand out a Chromebook to uh, every high school student. Uh, and the, the primary reason for that is um, as we, you know, hopefully in October when we move back to uh, in-person learning, uh, you know, that Chromebook is still going to be a big part of the, of the um the educational process for kids uh, because uh, we're all, you know, unfortunately we're only going to be able to have them two days a week and uh, there's still going to be significant pieces of their learning that is going to have to take place online. Uh, we're asking, uh, even if you don't, even if you have a, a good device at home, uh, we're still asking you to come pick up uh, your Chromebook because uh, that's the device that we're going to require the kids to use when we return to the building. Uh, it's kind of been our practice in the past that, you know, if, if kids wanted to uh, bring um, outside electronics and that kind of stuff, we haven't, uh, you know, cell phones, those kinds of things haven't been a problem. Uh, but, um, you know, in this particular case, uh, we, you know, we made a, a concerted effort to make sure that we had uh, brand new Chromebooks for everybody at the high school. That includes the students that are in our options program. Uh, and so we were able to, um, you know, thanks to, Mr. Bateman, um, you know, procure 450 brand new Chromebooks that are just going to be for the high school students. Uh, they're 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 a little nicer than the machines uh, that uh, come out of the carts that we've used uh, in the past. A uh, little little bigger, um, and they're also they're just a little more a little more powerful, a little more memory, uh, and um, they should really be a, a nice uh, device for the kids to use. And you know. For those of you that, that remember, I mean, I, I had uh, been pushing a one-to-one -one, uh, initiative really since the, since the day I was hired. And this, obviously this wasn't how I wanted us to get there, but uh, you know, I, we, did, uh, we did manage to go ahead and head that direction. And so the other thing I'd stress is this isn't just a, a one-off for the 2021 school year, just because we're in this uh, situation. You know, this is something that we view doing long term with our students uh, where they're, they're, they're going to be receiving that Chromebook uh, on a yearly basis and it'll be their device to use um, for the pretty much for the duration of their of their high school career. So um, that's another thing to, to kind of stress as well as it were. Uh, this is something that we'll continue to do going forward, uh, even when we return to uh, normal school. So um, that schedule. You haven't seen it. Let me. I'm going to share my screen here real quickly with everybody. Do that. I'll do that a couple of times, uh, just so that you can um, see some things. But I wanted to show everybody that schedule. So if you go to the website, you'll be able to see the checkout schedule. But here it is. Uh, for the high school, our checkout days are Wednesday, Thursday, or Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, um, and we're doing it alphabetically by 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 grade level. Uh, grades 11 and 12 will go on Wednesday. Um, that's kind of our 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 day to work out the kinks of the checkout process. But that'll be for both 
regular high school students and the option students. Um, sophomores will go on Thursday, and then the ninth graders will go on on uh, Friday. Also, you know, know that there is a uh, evening session on Thursday, September 10th for families that just can't swing that nine to three time. Uh, and then Monday, September 14th, we're also kind of open for uh, anybody that can't make the uh, the designated times that are set aside for um, for your grade level or for your um, alphabet. The other thing I'd emphasize is that if you have multiple kids in multiple buildings, uh, you don't need to come multiple times. Uh, you know, if you have an 11th grader and a fifth grader and you want to come on Wednesday, we'll be able to hand uh, you both devices on that day. So just know that you don't have to, uh, you know, we're not going to ask you to come four times if you have four kids in different buildings at different grade levels. Uh, we'll be able to hand you a Chromebook on uh, any of those any of those days. Um, all right, so uh, a couple other topics that I wanted to touch um, touch on was, one was uh, class schedules for uh, the upcoming year. Uh, you know, I think generally speaking, uh, you know, one of the things that is was tremendously different last week was, was how we did registration. Uh, it was primarily exclusively online. We did have families that uh, needed come in and get paperwork, uh, which was fine. We had that in the front office. But traditionally, normally at the high school, um, the registration is really more about students getting their schedules, making adjustments to those schedules, uh, and, um, you know, and then sending them out the door so that they have that information and they're ready to go for the first day of school. That was obviously challenging for us this year uh, with online registration. Uh, it also was challenging for us as we made a dramatic change to our master schedule uh, in, in years past, uh, you know, we've been on a seven period day, 50 minute class periods. Um, and one of the uh, most consistent um, feedback that I got from students and parents in the spring was that the seven class schedule, that load of homework, uh, the, the, that the number of classes was just uh, overwhelming for kids. It was a lot to keep track of. Uh, it was a lot for them to um, to manage. And so, you know, we, in our reopening meetings over the summer, uh, and also in some of the uh, other webinars and activities that I got to take part in as we started thinking about how we were going to reopen school, uh, we came to the conclusion that we probably needed to reduce that um, so that it was going to be a little more reasonable. So we made an adjustment to a four period day. Um, now, and But it's a four period day where uh, the students are going to work their way through um, a year's worth of content during a single semester. So um, it, it, it put us in a position where we had to make some you know, significant changes to our master schedule. Uh, it's pretty top heavy with uh, core subjects. Um, and unfortunately it doesn't have quite the uh, variety of electives that we normally would have. Um, and that was primarily to make sure that we, we were able to get kids scheduled in the stuff that they needed um, for graduation. So. We still have art, we still have PE, we still have all of Mr. Johnson's um, CT classes. Uh, you know, we have some electives that are, you know, upper level electives for math and science um, as well. But really for the most part, you know, we had to um, trim some of that stuff out of the schedule to make it work. Um, you know, I think the, the advantages of it obviously are that the students can focus on, um, on fewer classes, uh, spend more of their time concentrating on on the subjects that they have. Um, and the other thing that we really tried to do was, uh, you know, make it so that pretty much every student has three core academic subjects um, and an elective. So really they've got one class that they can um, not, you know, they don't need to, they need to still focus and work hard, um, but it's a class where there maybe isn't the, the homework load. If it's a PE class, if it's an art class, um, if it's a welding class, I mean, those kinds of things where um, the learning is still gonna be more uh, you know, hopefully some more hands-on kinds of things that the teacher can present and give to them. Um, and, you know, that should help reduce that academic load a little bit too. Uh, you know, there are some drawbacks. Uh, you know, I, I don't, I'm not a big fan of, you know, if I get math first semester, I don't see it second, second semester and I won't, you know, then see it again until September of that next year. So there are some, some things about it that we, that we didn't love, but, um, you know, in a lot of ways, it was the best of 
you know, of several not great options that we um, decided to go with. Uh, the other thing that I would add is that for kids who are interested in uh, upper level classes, AP classes, and those kinds of things, um, we're still going to do the best we can to offer those. Um, the, the, one of the nice things about our online curriculum, Edgenuity, is that it has an, a whole menu of AP classes, and our teachers are on board with giving kids support and answering questions and being available um, if they choose to take AP uh, U.S. History or AP Literature. Uh, they're going to have some support from Mr. Hart and uh, Mr. Burgess so that they can work their way through that. Uh, Mr. Monaghan is actually going to teach in his physics class. Curriculum is similar enough that he's going to teach AP physics and regular physics concurrently. And the students who want AP physics, he's just going to add pieces to what they're doing so that they'll be prepared for the exam. So, um, you know, again, it's not, it's not perfect. It's not exactly how we wanted to do it. Uh, but our kids will still have the opportunity to take some of those classes um, and participate in uh, in some upper level classes uh, with uh, with the help of the Ingenuity program and the support of our teachers. So, um, the last thing I would say is that you know, unfortunately, uh, because we were so uh, tight in terms of how we had to put the schedule together, and then primarily because we are required to um, put students in these small stable cohorts, it really uh, limits the amount of schedule changes that we can do. Um, and so, you know, in the web post from a couple of weeks ago, I indicated that at this time there, there won't be any schedule changes. Um, and, you know, what I would say to that is that obviously if we've got somebody who's terribly missed place in math, um, we're going to fix that. We're not going to, uh, let, you know, leave a kid to, to dangle in a in a math class that they don't belong in, we'll make sure that we make those corrections and fix those things so that students are, are able to, you know, succeed at, in the places that they, that they need to be. Uh, but electives, those kinds of things, you know, generally speaking, we try to do the best we could to put students in the electives that they forecasted for. Um, in some cases, uh, there may be students that didn't forecast for an elective and, uh, you know, we can have a conversation about that, but, generally speaking for the most part if uh, you know if you're placed in an elective it's because you picked it might not have been your first choice um, but it was on your on your on your list of options and so that's what you ended up uh, what you ended up with um, I would say second semester we may be able to make some adjustments to second semester schedules because we haven't created cohorts for that group yet um, but you know that would be something that we would focus on later in the semester probably you know in in December early January we'd start thinking about that so, uh, but as far as schedules go, just, uh, you know, I know that it isn't perfect. Uh, and I know some kids will probably be bummed and disappointed, but uh, we did the best we could to make sure that they got the things that they needed for graduation, which was our number one priority, uh, particularly for, for seniors. Uh, we didn't want to put them in a, in a position where they were going to be missing anything that they needed uh, to graduate. Um, as far as uh, two other things. One, the, the, as far as the comprehensive distance learning schedule, let me do a quick uh, screen share again with you. I just want to give you an overview of what the schedule looks like for, um, for the day. And so if you look at, if you look at the bell schedule here in comprehensive distance learning Tuesday through Friday, uh, each class period is about an, is an hour. Uh, with a 15 minute break uh, in between. And then there's a 45 minute lunch break there uh, in the middle of the day. So, you know, school is nine to, to 215. And, uh, you know, in order to get through the content that we need to get through, teachers will have supplemental materials for the kids to uh, work through uh, in addition to what it is that we're uh, doing uh, in the synchronous learning opportunities. Um, but you know, my expectation of the teachers, what I've been telling them is that they will have some kind of synchronous learning where they're having a meeting with their students on a daily basis. And so the same is, you know, for the students, the expectation is also the same that they're just like school. Um, they're showing up for these meetings at uh, at nine o'clock and 1015 and noon and 115. But the expectation is that they're there. Um, do I expect the, te the teachers to teach um, synchronously online for an hour? Probably not because most of the research shows that after 30 minutes or so, kids start to 
you know, they, they start to lose focus. And so we've been spending a lot of time this week uh, working on professional development around how to best create this online environment for kids, how to, how to create classes that are going to be engaging, that they're going to want to continuously come back to day after day, uh, even if they're not in person. And so, uh, you know, those are the kinds of things that we're working really hard to prepare. It's one of the reasons why we pushed the start back uh, that start date of school back a week so that we could get the teachers really ready to go with this. But, you know, I would, the thing I would stress when it comes to the, the schedule is that if you are, if you're a student and you're not a hundred percent sure you want to show up for classes on a daily basis, um, you know, you may want to, one, we'll probably have a conversation to kind of find out exactly why that is. But two, um, you know, you may want to, consider that options program. Um, you know, if you've decided as a family, you want to hang on to the summer job and, and you want to keep doing that and it impedes your ability to get to school every day, then that more independent online learning option of, of the options program might be a better choice. Um, I think we're going to be doing a really great job in what we're offering uh, at the high school. Um, but I know circumstances uh, may but some families or some kids in a position that might not be the way they want to go. So um, while I'm encouraging as many people as possible to be a part of our, our comprehensive distance learning program, I understand there may be some folks that choose um, something different. And if that's the case, you know, then we'll work with you on that. Um, but, you know, we are taking attendance. We are grading these classes. This isn't a pass fail type of situation like it was in the spring. Um, and so the expectation is kids will be showing up on a daily basis for, for class. Uh, last thing that I wanted to touch on before I open it up for questions is um, athletics. Uh, so we were given guidance by the OSAA and uh, Oregon Health Authority on what kinds of things we can do. Um, and so, you know, we put together a program. We, you know, we really feel like um, we can't get them here for school. Uh, we'd like to try to at least get them here on campus for some things. Um, we will have some kids coming uh, coming in on a limited basis. Uh, that's an option available to some of our SPED students, uh, students who have issues with uh, internet um, connectivity at home. Uh, and then we'll also probably be bringing in some, uh, some of Mr. Johnson's students for uh, welding auto body and uh, shop so that they can do some hands-on learning. But um, we also wanted to try to get kids in for some athletics. The OSA is allowing for that. They split the year into four seasons. Um, season one is actually the longest, and it's actually the one that's sort of the sort of most nebulous in terms of what you're allowed to do. Um, seasons two, three, and four are basically uh, the winter season is season two, just scrunched down into seven weeks. The traditional fall season is now season three, also scrunched into seven weeks in uh, in, in the end of February and through the beginning of May. Uh, and then season four is the traditional spring sports season. Um, and that, that will run through the end of June. So, but season one is an opportunity for kids to get in, do some conditioning, practice a little bit, you know, under some pretty strict guidelines still. Um, but we wanted to try to offer that. And so what we're doing um, for now, or what we've started and it begins next week is um, all of our spring sports athletes uh, are going to have an opportunity to participate in um, practices for for four weeks beginning next week. Um, baseball and softball, I know for sure, have decided to participate in this. Uh, it looks like track is maybe going to uh, continue to take a break. Um, but uh, the other thing is also all uh, other thing is all students who um, are not a spring sport athlete will have an opportunity to get to do strength and conditioning with Brittany Mc, uh, Brittany Hodgson, our trainer. And Brittany's going to run sessions um, three or four days a week as well uh, so that kids can get in and use our weight room uh, facility. So if you're not a spring athlete and you want to get in and get some workouts in, you'll still be able to do that. Um, but we'll do, we'll do four weeks of spring sports. We'll take a break for a week. Um, we'll do four weeks of fall sports and let those kids get uh, some work in. Um, and then we'll take another one-week break. Uh, and then we'll take, we'll go four weeks of the winter sports programs and we'll let them get going with the hope that what they're really doing is warming up for the beginning of their season in late December. Um, again, that schedule is available on our website. 
Um, if you want to go take a look at that, it's there. Uh, it's also got a bunch of the guidelines as to what it is that we're doing to protect your students, keep them safe, uh, you know, check-ins and screenings and um, putting kids in pods so that they're sticking with the same 10 kids um, from week to week uh, so that we're doing the best that we can to keep them um, safe and, and protected. But, uh, you know, our coaches are excited to get back to coaching. Uh, obviously, it was disappointing to not get to participate in the spring. And so uh, we wanted to give kids an opportunity to do some things um, using our facilities rather than having to branch out and just, you know, head anywhere that they that they wanted to. So we're we're happy to do it. And uh, I'll be excited to see kids back on campus, even in a, on a limited basis starting uh, next week. So those are my topics. Um, I'm going to go ahead and um, open it up now for questions. And uh, let me go ahead and I will go ahead and get started. It looks like there was a couple that popped up real fast. So, um, uh, so first one, yeah. So is there, um, uh, will the option students have graduation with the hybrid students? Uh, the answer to that is yes. So we will do uh, graduation together this year. Um, you know, the options program is another thing that isn't just a one-off. It isn't a program that we're just gonna be doing for this year. Uh, it's a program that um, we've been, we'd already been working. We spent a lot of time last year on looking at um, an alt ed program for students that maybe didn't fit with the traditional high school. It obviously, you know, kind of grew into something else entirely when uh, with COVID, but um, you know, this is a program that's gonna continue on um, for this year, for sure those kids will graduate and walk with the hybrid students. Um, in future years, we'll have to talk about that because that, you know, it, it really could potentially be its own separate um, alternative high school. We just don't know that yet. Uh, textbooks, yes, we'll hand out textbooks along with Chromebooks. Um, textbooks will be in a different location. The Chromebooks will be located back in the um, uh, back in the cafeteria, uh, and then we'll just have you come around to the front of the building and pick up books. Um, we're going to try to make it as easy for you as possible. Um, but uh, basically, what you'll you know the what we're going to try to do is just have the whatever you know we know the kids' schedules. Again, they're limited because there's only four class periods. You know, when you show up for Chromebooks, you should be able to walk into there, say your student's name, we should have a bundle of books ready for you um, so yeah, when we get to, uh, to that day. Um, is there a minimum time we'll need to stay on the four period school day? Uh, so yes, at a, at a minimum, we'll do this for, well, I mean, the, the four period school day is what we're doing for the year. Uh, you know, we won't make any midstream changes on that. Um, uh, you know, as far as minimum time that we're in comprehensive distance learning, that's going to go on at least through October 12th. Um, we'll assess the health metrics at that time and hopefully we'll be able to get on, you know, be able to get to that, uh, back into, you know, in person in, you know, in October. But, you know, I think for the most part, our plan is, um, that we will, uh, you know, this, this isn't something that I want to continue. I don't, you know, I, there are, there are aspects of the block schedule that I really like as a as a um, as an administrator, but um, I don't see us sticking with a four period day. Uh, I see us transitioning back to a more traditional seven period day. Uh, yeah, the A and B schedule is only for when we come back in person. So um, you'll you'll meet every day when we're in comprehensive distance learning. Um, for ninth graders in the future success class, so uh, one. Uh, one of the things that the teachers are going to be doing is, you know, a lot of our teachers are going to actually hand off for our ninth graders some of the, um, uh, you know, some of the, this is how we use this application. This is how we do this. Uh, you know, this is how we use this program. Uh, some of those, uh, some of that work is going to happen in future success. Um, uh, some of the other things that we're going to be doing is they'll, you know, there'll be a, a solid dose of social emotional learning in there. Um, to support kids as they kind of struggle through uh, some of the things that they're uh, that they're dealing with, which I know is you know challenging for some folks. Um, the other piece is you know there'll be just some times there where we're really just purely checking in with them to see how things are going. Um, you know we when we were in normal learning we did you know we used some of that time as some kind of guided uh, study hall time for kids, and I could still see us doing some of those things. Uh, so that those kids have an opportunity to make sure that they're keeping up with things. Um, 
and not falling behind in any of the of the uh, classes that they're that they're taking. I think uh, you know we wanted to hang with future success, even though we were in this distance learning mode because. Um, you know, one, we have this group of ninth graders. One of the other pieces is just this, still this continuing to teach them how to be high school students. Um, you know, we missed out on the shadow days that we usually do in the spring. We missed out on fly up. Um, you know, we're going to miss out on orientation, although we're going to do orientation in those future success classes, just um, broken up into, into multiple days. So, um, you know, realistically, you know, we're going to try to do the, the, the things that we've done previously with them so that they're being successful. Um, the other, uh, other thing that we're going to do is we purchase some curriculum called um, Why Try? Um, and Why Try is really, a, it's the same thing. It's about why is it important to get off on the right foot for high school? Why does it matter um, that you're on track to graduate after your ninth grade year? What's the importance of, of this, you know, this, in, of this high school experience? And so we're going to incorporate that curriculum in as well. Um, but we felt it was important that all the ninth graders first semester get future success, just like we did last year, so that they're going to be prepared for um, the, you know, the rigors of all the other classes that they're taking. Uh, and again, just like I said earlier, this is kind of a nod towards, um, you, you know, all of our ninth graders, the other three classes they have are going to be core academic classes. Um, and so this gives them a chance to do some homework, study, um, connect with a teacher, um, but then, you know, like I said, also learn how to be a high school student. Uh, yes, you, the last one there, do you have to pick up Chromebooks if we already have one of our own? Yes. Uh, you know, when we get back to in-person, um, those Chromebooks that we're, that we're um, issuing is the Chromebook that you're going to need to bring to school every day uh, for, uh, for work in, our, in, in the classroom. So yes, um, every single high school student is going to receive um, uh, Fernridge School District Chromebook, so everybody needs to get one. Um, so yes, well, so not not all textbooks. The majority of textbooks textbooks will be on the device, um, but there are some that we don't that we just don't have um, that are older that we do not have a digital version of. Um, all the social studies books, all the world language books, health, um, biology. Uh, you know, there's a fairly decent chunk of books that we have that are um, are on uh, that will be on the Chromebook, um, but there are a handful. You know, for example, our math curriculum is a little bit older, so we don't have that available as an online book. Um, several English teachers are still going to want students to um, to to have novels, and you don't necessarily have to pick up a novel. Um, you could always just um, you know there is a, a Chrome app that uh, operates with, with Kindle um, uh, that uh, you could use to pick up your, um, that you could add a, add a novel to if you wanted to, but there will be some books that have to be picked up. Um, so, you know, uh, in Madison, if you wanna use that Chromebook at home, um, you're welcome to, but when it comes to, when it comes time to, for us to return to school in person, you're gonna need to transition to the school issued Chromebook. So that's your call. Um, the apps and things that we're going to be using for school are going to be on the Chromebook that you're receiving. Um, so really, that's the other thing is the Chromebook that you get will be kind of locked and loaded and ready for you um, when it comes to some of the apps that the teachers are using. So that's the other reason I would encourage you to at least consider using it because it's going to be ready to go um, and you won't have to download any of that stuff on your own. Any other questions? Um, you know, I'd, I'll, I'll, I'll hang here for a few more minutes in case anybody thinks of anything else, but I would, I would close just by saying that, uh, you know, I, I think Gary said it really, really well um, in, our, in our meeting when we first got together on Monday. And um, we, uh, you know, he, 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 one of the things he said was that, you know, this is the first time he's entered a school year where he looks at it and, you know, he's asking the question, can we, could we fail? And, you know, this is the first time he said the answer has been potentially yes. And, um, you know, the, the, this, the part about that that is scary, obviously, is the thought that we could fail. But, um, you know, I think the exciting thing is, is that we, you know, 
when there's that possibility for failure, there's also that possibility of, you know, amazing successes. And, um, you know, our teachers are, are ready to go. They have uh, done a really great job this week. There's going to be some more great uh, learning that's going to take place next, uh, next week. And I think we're, you know, we're ready to get this, ready to get this done. So while there's the chance that, you know, we could, you know, stub our toe and drop the ball here, I also think that there's much higher opportunity for us to be really, really successful with this. So a um, couple more questions or we're going to have a job shadow. You know, I think we're going to try, Joe, um, although it may end up being something that we have to do virtually, but we are, you know, there is still going to be some career learning that's going to take place and we're going to try to figure it out that. Um, letter grading system, you know, as of, as of right now, we are planning on um, a traditional A, B, C, D, and F uh, system. Uh, we, we may, uh, one of the conversations we're going to have next week, um, and I want to make sure that this gets out to families before we were, before we, you know, before the school year starts as we, you know, we are, we, we're kind of sitting between A, B, you know, A through F or an A, B, C, no pass. Um, and so that's, a, that's something that we'll decide, uh, next week and we'll get that out, uh, to parents before we start classes. So everybody knows what the, what the grading system is. So, um, but that's, that we're kind of stuck between those two right now. Uh, yes, we'll have training videos. I know the middle school did a really, has a bunch of stuff there. Um, uh, you know, I'm not gonna lie to you. I'm gonna probably just go ahead and um, uh, steal those videos and post that, uh, post that uh, link as well to the, to the high school website. But I also think our plan was to, um, to make sure that some of that training went out uh, within the classroom as well um, from, the, from teachers. Um, you know, the, one of the things, I, you know, and obviously it's a little bit different for our ninth graders coming in. And that's, I get, that's the other thing I would add is that um, the, uh, that future success class is going to go a long way towards teaching those, uh, those ninth grade students about Google Classroom and what it is they need to do to interact in there. Because uh, I know they didn't get much of that, at least not at the level that our that the 10th through 12th graders did at the high school in the spring. Um, but you know, as far as uh, as far as our um, students are concerned, I think outside of the ninth graders, they're pretty well prepared and pretty well versed. But we, yeah, we will send out training videos for uh, for Zoom and Google Classroom for our for our parents, particularly for our ninth grade parents, who this is still a learning process for them. Okay, well, I'm gonna stay here for, a, uh, I'll hang here for a couple more minutes if anything else pops up, but uh, I really wanna thank you for joining uh, me this evening. We're gonna um, do this again next Thursday as well at the same time at 5.30. Um, uh, so if, you know, I'll have probably some follow-up information, a little bit of cleanup uh, stuff on Chromebook checkout and just kind of some more um, information on uh, just kind of those first, that first day of school as well. So um, thank you everybody for, uh, taking the, a few minutes to uh, hang out with me tonight. And, um, you know, I'm excited for uh, the start of the school year. Obviously, I miss, I miss your kids. Um, I'm ready to have them back. But, uh, you know, I'm, I'm confident we're going to do a bang-up job of this and get, uh, get your kids to a good place here as we get started with the school year. So thanks for your time, everybody. And um, I'll stick here for a minute in case anybody has any other questions. Thanks. So um, Mary, textbook pickup is, is, in, is on the, it's at the same time as when you pick up your Chromebook. Um, so uh, whenever the, uh, whatever, whatever your designated Chromebook time is, that's when you can pick up your textbooks as well. And they'll be, the Chromebooks will be available in the, in the cafeteria. The, um, uh, 
the um, the uh, textbooks will be in the front in the in the front lobby. So same same exact time. Uh, Madison, I'll be in. I'll actually I won't be in again until Tuesday, but uh, you know I'm happy to talk to her um, on Tuesday. Uh, at this time, yes. I mean, unless unless there's some sort of mistake that we made um, on the schedule, uh, those are the finalized schedules for the for the first semester. Madison, did you you, you can't see them at home access? Are you? Oh, well, that's weird. Are you are you doing the hybrid, or are you going into the um, uh, options program? So you're planning to return to school and do the comprehensive distance learning with the teachers. Okay, uh, let me I'll, let me check for you and find out why that is. Because I mean, as far as I know, everybody's schedule should be there. Um, we didn't turn any we didn't turn anything off. Um, let me check in with Angela, uh, and we'll uh, I'll get something out to you as soon as as soon as I can. Um, hopefully, that won't be something that is, you know, uh, we'll. It, hopefully sooner rather than later as maybe even as soon as tomorrow. I don't know why that would not be showing up because I know most everybody else has seen their schedule. Remind me what grade you are and what grade you're in Madison. Okay. Um, and then did you, uh, did you pick mostly regular, I mean, regular academic stuff or are you thinking AP classes? Okay, well, we'll, uh, you know, I mean, so in all likelihood, I mean, you're gonna have probably a couple of uh, core classes. You'll have probably English um, and your math, uh, and then you'll probably have a couple of electives is the most likely thing that you'll see, or you'll have your history and your science and a couple of electives is, you know, that's typically what we're, what, what we're doing is for the juniors, it's a couple of core classes, it's a couple of electives, um, or in, in some cases, for juniors who are in good shape for graduation, which I'm, which I know you are, it might be three, uh, it might be, uh, you know, two classes in elective in an open period, depending upon what you need for graduation. So, uh, I'll, I'll check with Miss uh, Angela and make sure we get a schedule for you. Yep, you bet. All right, well, Jessica, Madison, if you let, let you guys have other questions, I'm gonna go ahead and pop on out of here and we'll uh, talk to you girls soon, okay? Oh. Did you have a question, Jessica? Okay, I'll, t I'll talk to you soon.